I'm joined today by John Powells, who's produced an absolutely beautiful book called North Sea to the East. He's managed to publish during lockdown, which can't have been easy, but it's a fantastic combination of poetry and paintings. It's subtitled A Personal Landscape of Teesside and North Yorkshire. And he, we are so honored that he has opened up his personal landscape to all of us to share. And John, just could you could you start by just letting uh, let us in, in the secrets of how how this book came about? Yeah, well, I've been writing landscape poetry and getting it published, fortunately, for about oh thirty years or so now, Robert. And uh, always in that time, pretty well always in that time, trying to write something significant about my own landscape, the the landscape where I come from of Teesside and, and North Yorkshire. And for whatever reason, and I think probably because I was always, I think, a little bit too close to it um, to, to um, give it some perspective, if you like, to write about it, uh, I always failed miserably. Um, not for the want of trying. I did have, I have had over the time a few, book, few poems published, but nothing that I wanted to do, which was something significant at, at book length, uh, around that, that landscape. And uh, what really happened, I guess, you mentioned lockdown. Uh, well, lockdown happened and um, it, it provided, if nothing else, an opportunity to be able to sit down with no other distractions whatsoever and concentrate on what I wanted to do. And uh, almost straight away uh, when that, that happened, I actually found what I'd uh, been looking for uh, all those years, which was a way to get into what I wanted to do, I found the kind of key to mm. how I wanted to to write it, which was to actually make it a personal narrative. So whilst the uh, the, the the book uh, deals with the the landscapes instead of of uh, Teesside in North Yorkshire, it's also a personal landscape in the sense that it runs through my personal history. Um, so it covers something like sixty years of my life, uh, as well as the landscape of the northeast, and that was. If you like, that provided the key for me to be able to get in to actually write the stories, to write the poems, and the, and then subsequently to source the artwork. And you said Teesside and North Yorkshire. And, yeah. Um, from from an outsider, we know differently, but from an outsider, that there could be the very different beasts, aren't the Teesside and North Yorkshire, the industry of, te of Teesside and, and, and the rural beauty of North Yorkshire. I see. Yeah. But we, we know that, that that might not be the case, but for outsiders, they might think, oh, they're different things to put together. Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, and uh, in fact, it's one of the key things that uh, is a theme throughout the book is the interplay of uh, the that island of industry moving up to the mouth of the river, uh, surrounded by the green ocean with the, the two national parks, the heritage coast, um, uh, the little uh, market towns uh, and villages around about as well. So that interplay is one of the, the things that's always fascinated me. And I've known, obviously, like you have since I was a, ch a child and people around, around here will be. But I hope it's something that people uh, in a wider audience will find interesting and fascinating because there's a, a huge history and background to all of that, as well as the, uh, the differences in geography, if you like. Yes, because of course those landscapes um, in the two national parks, as we met, we're, we're so lucky to have two natural national parks on our on our doorstep, aren't we? That there can't yeah. be many parts of the country that have that. But uh, but they're also well, they're still they're still working environments. But in the past, there were there were industrial environments as well, weren't they? Very much part of that. Indeed, and industrial environments in, in what's now what we now regard as the countryside, of yeah. course, because. Uh, a lot of the uh, the Yorkshire Dales, I and mean, there's quite a bit in the book about uh, Wensley Dale, Swale Dale, for example, and the background of those two Dales is largely lead mining, yeah. um, which, uh, you know, so if you went up, the, uh, up those Dales a couple of hundred years ago, uh, you'd have seen uh, just as much industry as you do towards the mouth of the river uh, now in Teesside. Um, and similarly, you know, obviously in uh, in different parts of the uh, the uh, North York Moors, huge amounts of iron mining uh, and uh, and also stone uh, stone quarrying as well that went on. So 
there are there have, there have been industrial landscapes in, themselves at the time as well. So the, what what are now picturesque ruins that that that, that you've captured in some of your poems and 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 also draw the artist's eye as well, don't they? They do indeed. Yeah, absolutely. And that was one of the things that um, uh, also helped to provoke quite a lot of the writing in the book because one of the things I decided quite early on uh, in once I decided how I wanted to approach the book from my point of view was that one of the other themes in my work is that I've very often worked with other artists in collaboration uh, in my published work, uh, very often including visual artists, um, uh, photographers, uh, painters, printmakers um, and uh, I decided that I wanted to do that again and part of what uh, drove that for me in this this instance was that obviously being locked down meant that I couldn't spend as much time as I would have wanted to out and about in the area myself visiting all the places places that I'd, I'd been to and revisiting them uh, to get the inspiration back so what I actually did was to get hold of all the people that all the artists that I knew working in the area and doing work about the area, uh, of which there are lots and lots of very, very, very good, very able artists, and started to, uh, to uh, work with them uh, to find out what their inspiration was, that what they were working on, what they were interested in. And uh, then we started to work together to collaborate on putting the, uh, the, uh, the book together. Uh, so yeah, you do find, um, uh, again, there's, there's a hugely diverse body of artwork. There's over 100 artworks uh, featured in the book and they cover everything from what people would, uh, I guess, uh, uh, describe as the more picturesque, picturesque aspects of, uh, of the countryside, but they also cover uh, every bit, the other aspects of, of both Teesside and the, and the Moors, including its industrial background. Yeah, and, and, the, and the artists, uh... Um, again, the spectrum from very abstract to, um, well, obviously, the documentary photographs as well. So, uh, Indeed. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're interpreting things in, through their own eyes as well, aren't they, and their, their own skills. Absolutely. And, and, they, and they go right through the ages as well, because, um, for example, uh, J.N.W. Turner spent a lot of time in, in North Yorkshire. Uh, and uh, there are extracts from his painting sketchbooks uh, there, but it also goes right up to the to the modern day with with our local modern masters like William Tillier, uh, you mentioned with his abstract uh, works, also Mackenzie Thorpe with his iconic works that a lot of people from Teesside and internationally will know. But there are, as I say, uh, twenty or thirty other artists' work uh, involved there, and their styles are very different. Their approach is, is very different and their inspirations are very different. And sometimes uh, I've got the privilege of being able to work with them very directly on the, on the work in the book in the sense that we would start out either with um, the, the, uh, a sketch for a painting or me having an idea for a poem, sometimes only a few words of a poem, and we'd exchange it between us uh, until the point where we actually had a finished poem and a finished piece of art that that went together uh, so so there are some that are very very collaborative and there are others where either the poem was finished first or the artwork was finished first and uh, I responded to the artwork or they responded to the uh, to the poem in order to generate the finished finished piece of work. That's wonderful it's almost like um, it's almost like writing a song where you've got the lyricist and and and, and the musician and and which people always ask, don't they? Which comes first? And yes, <laughs> yeah. But as you said, sometimes it's a it's, it's a sketch from either side, isn't it? Really, it is. And in, in the best in the best uh, collaborations, it is the idea can come from either way around. And what I've found over over a lot of years of working with visual artists, particularly musicians as well to an extent, but with visual artists particularly, the working process of uh, doing visual art is actually very similar to the, uh, to the process of writing poetry. Uh, and it, even some of the images, uh, uh, sorry, even some of the, uh, the technical terms and the language around how you create in, in those genres is the same as well. So there are, there are things that both, both sorts of people understand about each other's way of working. And um, 
let, we must talk about the cover because yeah. I think that the cover gives you an insight into another angle that 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 that, that you represent in the book because the cover to yeah. me is is the iconic Borough shirt. You talk about iconic things, but that's that's the the Jack Charlton. Jack, Jack Charlton's champions from the '74 with with a with a white chest band around the around the middle of the of the of the uh, the sleeve, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, if I hold it up, hopefully people can get an idea of, yeah. uh, of what it's like. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I wanted something. Well, first of all, obviously, I couldn't write a book about my home area. Uh, I guess you couldn't, Robert, either, without <laughs> mentioning Middlesbrough Football Club. It wouldn't. Yeah. It just wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be complete. Uh, and something about the uh, the iconic part that they've got to play uh, in the in the area, uh, and indeed the landscapes in terms of the two grounds uh, and their environs that play such a huge part in the area. And when I came to do the the, the cover of the book, obviously from a, a commercial point of view, I was looking for something that was going to be attractive. It was going to be resonant, and when it appeared in front of thousands of other books in a in a bookshop. <laughs> That people would look at it and think, I know what that's about, or at least I know where it's about. Let's put it that way. Um, so I hope that when people um, do go into their their local bookshop, uh, they'll have no difficulty um, uh, picking it out. But it's a very resonant uh, memory for for me, and I lay out some of that in the book as well. Of course, you do indeed, and you you talk about the the, the two grounds, and um, also some of the the artists that that you've mentioned. Um, depict the, the the two grounds as well, don't they? So it's uh, they do, yeah. yeah, a bit of the history of Borough as well, the, the recent history. Indeed, so yeah, yeah, and I think um, uh, what I've tried to describe uh, as well in the um, in uh, the poems about uh, about the grounds. Uh, well, there's one of them, in fact, that deals with uh, with going to a night match at both grounds. And it, and it deals with, with it, uh, I actually hark back in the introduction to the poems with uh, what it must have been like for ancient people going to a stone circle for a, yeah. uh, for a ceremony at night with lit up by, by brushwood torches and hundreds of people there for a, a ceremony. And you could actually see it for uh, a long way before you were actually close to the, uh, the action itself. Uh, and you could hear the noise building and all of that. And I look in the poem to try and you know replicate that in terms of approaching Essen Park at night and the riverside uh, at night as well uh, which is kind of um, uh, it reminded me again today because I know this is got, not got, probably going to go out for a, a few weeks yet Robert but uh, you know tonight's a, an iconic night for a night game at the riverside because it's 15 years since uh, the uh, defeat of Stoyer that took us to the um, uh, to the uh, final of the uh, UEFA Cup, which um, uh, is one of the, one of those nights uh, of all nights at the Riverside. So it, it's it's probably uh, auspicious that we're we're, yeah. we're doing this interview today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's uh, yeah. I think it's the it's the first thing we we, we always think of, don't we? It, we? As Borough fans, we think of the night matches and being yeah. drawn to the to the the four floodlights at Ayrson Park, yeah, which yeah. We, you can see from miles away. Just like yeah. you were saying, if you were going towards a, a a stone circle, you would see the see the torches. But then, yeah. the, the 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 match that stands above all that else is 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 that game against Stoya and the um, yeah. and the last few minutes and how any of us survived our our hearts survived that night. I don't know. <laughs> Indeed, and of course, dear old Ali, Ali Brownlee and uh, everybody around my place for for a palmo was the uh, uh, the quote that summed it summed it all up. Yeah. And the quote that's now written uh, on across the across the, the bridge at Shepperson Way as you as you as you're walking towards the stadium, isn't it? Indeed, it is. So, and I think those those kind of things, uh, those sorts of um, experiences and, and rituals, are part of what goes to make an, an area uh, an area like ours. And it's partly what I've tried to capture in the in the book, not just about the football grounds, of course, but about the area um, as as a as a whole that those sorts of experiences and backgrounds and things that have accrued over, over history and over time make us all what we are and hopefully kind of set the basis for the, the future as well. And, and certainly in terms of the, uh, the football club, for example, 
there's nothing really that makes the town feel better in itself than when the football club's doing well. So, um, you know, we could be, we could do with being back in the Premiership uh, again and experiencing yeah. the sort of nights that we experienced 15 years ago again, because it makes the, it gives the whole town a lift and it puts us on the map uh, internationally, which is what we, we, uh, we need to be. Um, the only thing I kind of worry about with us being on the map internationally uh, is that um, uh, what we were talking about right at the start of this, Robert, <laughs> which is what a beautiful area this is. Yeah. Uh, we suddenly give away that secret to the rest of the yeah. uh, to the rest of the world. Um, anyway, I mean, this year of all years, I guess with lots of staycationing going on, mm. I'm not going to complain if people enjoy the North York Moors, the Dales, if they come to Whitby, uh, as long as they don't come on the day that, <laughs> that I'm there. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I, you can't you can't complain that people want to enjoy the same things as we're we're able to enjoy. But you're but you, you're you're giving us. Uh little glimpses of, of, of the details um, in, in between some of those big sort of locations as well and and, and, yeah. and showing us to we, to look a bit closer I think I think yeah. about uh, David Hockney when he did when he did all his work on the walls just a, 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 a just a, a an ordinary lane in, in yes. the walls and, and the seasons through time and that's what you're through your through your eyes and the artists we could we can look again can't we we could look at some of the hidden areas that we haven't maybe uh, we've taken for granted perhaps in the past. I, I, I hope so, and 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 not all of it immediately. Um, uh, what you would call traditionally beautiful, uh, yeah. either because not all of the area is traditionally beautiful, but there is beauty to find in 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 all of the area in all of its parts. But yes, I mean that's one of the things I hope people will will uh, do is. Um, uh, you know, maybe is look again or, or think again or uh, maybe go back to places that they haven't been to for a while or they wouldn't have thought of going uh, and see them with uh, with fresh, fresh eyes. Definitely. I mean, the the, um, the area I cover in the book really is, is what I call my stomping ground from from when I was a, literally from when I was a, a very young child. Uh, to uh, to uh, now as a as a granddad of sixty seven, um, and it's largely the 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 area between the the Tees in the north and the the Esk in the south, uh, and the coast in between that, and then back from that through the North York Moors and the and the Dales out to the to the west. So it's really that kind of triangle of uh, of land that I cover. Uh, in there, and I, I try to cover as as much aspect of that as I can uh, from personal experience and through time, as well as through the um, the experience of the artists as well, and and to try and take a look at places uh, again, as I say, that that might, might not be uh, as as obvious as perhaps uh, some of the other places might be. And we talk about staycations, and of course, um, um, in in the past before. We were able to jet off to to, to well, what, what, as we as we can at the moment uh, to foreign climes. Um, you meant you've got you mentioned Scarborough in the book, and and Scarborough yeah. was, was like was as far as we, we used to go, really, wasn't it? It was it was yeah. It, was, it had a certain allure to it, didn't it? Yeah. Well, it, it, I think in the in the book I describe it as a kind of foreign holiday for yeah for us because. Um, as I say, it, it wasn't a day out as uh, as it would be uh, to anybody uh, nowadays. It was where you went for your your week's holiday, and it, and it was a week. It was never yeah. a fortnight because you couldn't afford it. Uh, you went for a, a, a week, and it was it was exotic. I mean, it was um, uh, it was foreign, definitely, uh, and uh, it was the sort of place that um, uh, you looked forward to going to because it was different. Uh, and new, and uh, uh, I try again, try and capture some of that mm. uh, in uh, in the book. And in the last line of the poem, uh, I, I kind of say, even though I know the place differently now, uh, as a as kind of a day trip haven, if you like, I've still got the sand in my shoes as those visits I did when I was a, a kid. You know, so you, it's still going back there still brings back those memories. Mm. And and. and you basically had to get right over the right over the top of the North York Moors to get there, and then and then yeah. you see the sea before you. So you, you've had to work to get there, haven't you? Really, yeah, <laughs> expectation. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I, and when we used when we used to go, first of all, it was train or bus, of course. Yeah. So it was, we didn't, you know, my dad didn't have a car uh, uh, when we were younger, so it was uh, it was train or bus. Yes, and which made it even more so it made it feel even more like exotic absolutely. foreign travel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, and, and the, the title of the book, North Sea to the East, and of course, I suppose that uh, resonates. We talk about the history and and that we, we were formerly Cleveland, weren't we, which was land of steep hills. Which, yeah. And, 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 um, <clears throat> and the steep hills going to, to, the, to the sea with it, with it, with it, with the cliffs along the, along the shoreline. It's, it's part of what makes us a, a special area, doesn't it, around here yeah. between the rivers? No, absolutely. And um, one of the other things that makes us special, I think, um, that, that links to that, um, particularly the, uh, the, the sea part of it, is um, that the area itself has always been uh, a, a ground for people coming in uh, to uh, the area. Uh, way back, it, you know, including into Roman times, the Romans were here, of, of course, before the Romans, even the Picts and the Scots were here after the Romans, the Vikings were, were here. Uh, and in the Industrial Revolution, of course, people were drawn from the countryside into the infant Hercules in, in, in Teesside and from beyond. I mean, my, my extended family, my, my heritage is from East Yorkshire in the south up to Scotland and the borders in the north. But my, my uh, distant relatives came into the areas to find work like lots of other people did. But also we've got a, a long experience and a, and a long history of people going out from Teesside right across the world as well. Um, and the products of, of the industry of Teesside going right across the world as well. I mean, the, the famous, uh, you know, Wembley Arch go, going to the Sydney Harbour Bridge, you know, we, we, the products that we, we made on Teesside built the world, the chemicals from Teesside fueled the world uh, and uh, so we've got a, a long history of being an international and as well as a national uh, a bit of the of the uh, of the country and the that particular mix of the geology, the the, the countryside, but also the sea uh, between those two rivers with their 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 river mouths. Where of course, uh, again to quote another local hero, where Captain Cook set out from to discover quite a lot of the. The rest of the, the world. So we've we've always been, as well as uh, very local and sometimes uh, very parochial, we've always been international and had those links. And uh, again, going back to our, our discussion earlier about the football club, uh, Anthony Vickers uh, uh, used a term a while back, uh, the, the diaspora, you know, the fact that the football club has got links and its fans all over the world. You'll know from the, mm. the fanzine, Robert, uh, as well as from the various websites and elsewhere, how many people in different parts of the world, uh, ex, not just expat um, teasiders, of which there are lots, but, but people who are native to other parts of the world uh, end up following the, uh, the football club as well as anything, anything else. So it's, uh, as I say, we, we've always had and always will have, I hope, these international connections. And I've been glad recently uh, in the town to see what's going on in the creative industries now coming forward, the, the digital industries around the university, which again, starting to build up these international contacts with, with what we do, as well as the green industry that's coming back onto the, onto the ex-steel sites as well. So those traditions of the infant Hercules, I, I think, and as well as the, the long history of the area are, are working forward into the way things are, are gonna be uh, in the future as well, which are, is, I think, something to be optimistic about. And goodness knows we need things to be optimistic mm. about at the moment. You were right, because um, we, we can look, if we look at Middlesbrough, we can, we, can, we can almost, it doesn't take many generations to get back to the start. At 1830, there was 25 people living in, yep. in Middlesbrough before the, before the, it was, the, uh, the new town was built. And, and then there was an incredible amount of hurdles that took, in the 19th century where one industry would would grind to a halt and had to keep reinventing ourselves and yeah and that's that's what you're seeing now that we we're, we're maybe the, the kind of people that, that are resilient and, and are able to think again in another direction yeah i, I think that's right I, and i think um if if you 
uh, are prepared to uh, to learn from your experience uh, and to uh, think creatively uh, about moving forward. And again, you know, in, in the arts world as well as anything else, Teesside's always been an immensely creative place and still still is. If I think, for example, and there's a poem in the book about this around the music scene in Teesside in the late 60s and 70s, where you think about the, that, that time in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. The, not just the people who were coming to Teesside to play their music at that time, lots of which I mentioned. Yeah. There are you know, huge numbers of people, Teesside natives, whose music, again, spans the, mm. the world now. So it's always been a very creative uh, place. And again, the, you know, the artists in the book bear testament to that as well. So if you have that kind of creativity and ability to, uh, to uh, think forward, I think it does give us the, um, uh, the hope that we can be optimistic. That's absolutely, absolutely right. And and as you said, just flicking through the pages of your of your book, apart from the uh, the wonderful poems, the the, um, the 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 paintings, we we see so many different artists uh, and with, with so many different styles and so many different takes on on the on the landscape. And uh, it's a fantastic collection and and just shows the just shows the, the incredible amount of talent. That, that, that has been inspired by by the landscape and the townscape from where we are, doesn't it? It's, it's it brilliant. does. It does. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I described the um, uh, the book um, uh, as a as a personal landscape. Yeah. But it's not. It's not just my personal landscape. But yeah. Of course, it's it's the personal landscape of, of everybody that uh, that uh, contributed to it. So. Uh, and I know uh, from talking to those artists uh, how much you know they they have the the feeling for the the area and appreciate it, which comes out in 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 their work. And I hope it resonates for people uh, when they hopefully have a chance to uh, to see the uh, the book themselves. And which brings us on to where where can we see your book? Okay. Uh, well, the, the book's available uh, now in, in uh, good independent bookshops across uh, Teesside. Uh, Drake's in Stockton, for example, have uh, stocked the book. Um, there uh, is a, a book co bookshop called The Book Corner in Saltburn, which uh, stock it. And also going down to the other end of the, the area, the, the uh, bookshop have it in stock as well. And now they're all open again. I'd urge people to, uh, to go there and, and, and buy. I mean, it is available through Amazon, of course, you can get it uh, from there. But if you want the bargain, I would suggest that you go to the publishers direct, which is uh, www.holsgrove.com. That's H-A-L-S-G-R-O-V-E.com. Uh, they're, the, they're the publishers and it's available through their, their website, uh, postage and packing uh, free. So. Um, uh, it'll give you uh, um, a bit of a benefit on uh, on buying it through other sources. But as I say, I, I would hope people would also support independent bookshops in and across Teesside as well, because they've they've had a hard time recently yeah. and they've they've been very supportive to me with the uh, the book. So uh, please do do go along and 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 support them if you if people can. What I'm also hoping to do, as well, I, I plan to do is yeah. that as soon as uh, lockdown allows, which will mean probably from the summer onwards, I'll be doing the sorts of things that I would have normally done when a book was published anyway. So I'll be, I'll be doing readings in the area. Um, I'll be doing an exhibition of work from the book oh. uh, as well at local galleries around the, the area uh, and doing talks about, uh, about the work as well. So uh, if people look at my uh, my website uh, or watch the local media for details they'll see then uh, when I put that program together. Oh fantastic really look forward to that that's that's great that, uh, that there, there, it, you could spin off in so many directions from this book can't you and that, that that sounds absolutely wonderful plenty of things for people to look forward to there. That would be great and I look forward to doing it it's, it's always um, uh, great fun to do those kind of things and it's one of the things I've really missed about the publication through lockdown is that I haven't been able to have those personal contacts with people uh, to discuss the work with them and to let them hear some of it read out loud. So, Oh, we look forward to that, John. And thanks so much for, for, for this 
chat today. It's been wonderful. Not at all. Thank you, Robert. It's very kind of you. And I hope everything with uh, Local History Month goes really well. <laughs>